Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We are going to be talking about decoding the diabetes dilemma, how you can overcome your blood sugar challenges. So we realize there's lots of information, lots of technical information sometimes, and Dr. Justine has made herself available um, to answer any of those questions for you. Um, you can just text her at 647-987-9355. I wanted to welcome Dr. Justine um, this morning. She's gonna be our speaker. Um, Dr. Justine is an incredible uh, practitioner and um, owner of Justine Blaney Wellness Center. She um, is, design sorry, she it leads an incredible healthcare team um, and she really is focused and believes that everyone deserves a healthy healthcare team that focuses on prevention, spinal health and open communication. Please help me welcome Dr. Justine. Hello, everybody. All right. Great stuff coming up today, but just keeping informed of all the good things that we're trying to provide to you every single week, something new. So we're going to be talking about 12 foods uh, that balance blood sugars. We're going to have yoga breathing that helps with stress and anxiety attacks. We're going to have information about arthritis and natural pain relievers, and then a uh, workout for your feet, knees, hips coming up. So stay tuned. Lots of uh, old talks that you can uh, re-watch or watch if you miss them. We have so much on our website, on Facebook, on YouTube. So stay tuned and we want to keep giving you this great information uh, in order to make sure that we're getting healthier. This is what we know. We want to focus on making our health a number one priority. All right, today we're going to cover up shocking challenges about for all people about blood sugars, nutrients that balance our sugars and restore energy, insulin spiking foods that we want to avoid, lifestyle changes, and the missing link. So we're going to cover all these five things today. Why are you here? Because everybody finds it difficult to to eat right, to do all the things right, to know everything. So our goal today is to provide you information so you can make one change, one change a week, one change a month will allow us to have more energy, reduce our stress, be healthier and less at risk of concerns that affect our blood sugars. So today, one of the biggest problems that we look at is that it's affecting 10% of Americans. It's affecting Canadians. It's 50% people have insulin resistance. And one of the ways that they can find this out is looking at their waist-hip ratio. Of course, we want to make sure that our waist is smaller than our hips. Um, and some of this information today comes from Dr. Wolfson. He's called the paleocardiologist. We've spoken um, to him and had talks with him, and he provided some of this information. So you will see slides that are coming from him. Um, he'll look at this, and when you're at, you want to look at when you're getting tested, your A1C, your fasting glucose, your oral glucose, tolerance test. These are some of the tests you would do with your medical doctor or your naturopath. So today I'm not going to say that I'm an expert. I don't cure or work with diabetes. I work with the spine and helping the nervous system. But I also want to make sure that you know some of the tests to ask your MD about or your naturopath about so that you can be monitoring your blood sugars and monitoring your risks as well as possible. All right, now this is on the rise. If you look through the years through the US, you'll see more and more red over the years. This is a problem that's getting worse. So certainly something we wanna monitor for risks of weight gain, risk of obesity. Um, certainly now in these times, I know it's affecting my mom because just not getting out walking, not getting out doing things and eating becomes a way to spend time, a way, you know, if you're home, you're kind of home closer to the fridge more often. So definitely we need action plans to manage this. So it's on the rise. If you look that uh, type 2 diabetes is related to the Western diet, uh, lack of exercise is related to weight gain, obesity. It's increasing according to the World Health Organization by 70% by 2035, 70%, that is huge. And certainly these times is not helping this. These stats are from way before the pandemic. So we know that this is potentially even worse and it is affecting our children 
more and more. The more they don't are not active, um, the more they are also closer to the fridge um, and not getting the uh, activity they're used to, they're more at risk as well. So if you look at, this is from Dr. Wolfson, you'll see when diabetes risks go up, you have increased risk of heart attack, dementia, stroke, hypertension, kidney disease, erectile dysfunction, blindness, neuropathy. So certainly something that we want to be monitoring those fasting glucose levels with your MD or your naturopath. And you can see that it can lead to concerns that affect your brain, it can affect your heart, it can affect even things in your extremities like ulcers, um, gangrene, um, it can affect your eyes, your kidneys, and your nerves. And as a chiropractor, our goal is to work with the nervous system, but all of these other areas certainly want to be monitoring with your naturopath. Um, we have two on the team, Dr. Linda and Dr. Udani, um, or with your medical doctor. Some of the impact on your body, is it affecting your heart, your blood vessels? As I said before, it increases your risk of heart disease and stroke. Um, and it leads to risks of blindness, kidney failure. Um, and some of the signs might be simple things like numbness, tingling, pain, or weakness. So that's why uh, as a chiropractor, when doing new patient examination, we would be asking you about any radiation or any numbness or tingling in your extremities. And unfortunately, you'll see from Dr. Wilson, it increases your risk of dementia the more you have signs of diabetes. And this isn't the solution. Um, you know, our fast foods are open, but this is actually increasing our risks of diabetes or early onset type 1, type, um, type 2 diabetes, increasing the risks and the damage. Um, we want to stay away from our fast foods. So some of this excess weight, again, this comes from Dr. Wilson, um, excess carbohydrate intake and uh, sedentary lifestyle genetics play a role, but definitely you have to activate those genetics. And we know that lifestyle um, can decrease your risk, um, but you can see all the challenges here with insulin resistance that can affect your overall health, even things like polycystic ovarian disease or affecting your sleep or affecting your liver. Um, it's not just the sort of the uh, cholesterol heart disease that most people think about. So as we look at our health care, you'll see that on, on the one side, the green side, you'll see all this energy in life. And that's, of course, where I want to be pushing and taking steps towards. Or the red side is that side of really, really, really poor health. And many times we could be where that blue line is, is that we have no symptoms. We feel fine, but our actual health is declining. We're not as energetic as we could be. We're not as excited to get up in the morning as we could be. We're desperate for that coffee, we're low energy, at, you know, at two, three, four o'clock in the evening. Um, we're not getting good quality sleep, but we don't actually have pain or symptoms that make us worry about our health. And so our goal with maximized living care is to be taking steps towards that green stone, that green area. So whether it's through nutrition, whether it's through mindset and stress management and breathing exercises, was taking care of your nervous system, um, exercise, or minimizing your toxins. We want to cover all five essentials to be healthy because it isn't one thing. But if we take steps each week, just a little bit each week, we can be working towards that green zone. So some of the risk factors, yes, family history can play a role, your age, your race, um, insulin resistance, your weight, your blood pressure, um, inactivity, um, stress on, throughout the whole body. These are all risk factors that can affect your um, risk of type 2 diabetes. So some of the problems, um, the medical system will look at metformin or injections, and sometimes this is absolutely needed, and you do need to talk to your medical doctor, but our goal cool today's focus is on lifestyle change, so to minimize those risks. So some of the challenges, the shocking contributors to affecting your sugar and your diabetes is your hormones and how your nervous system is functioning to all the different organs in your body. 
So some of the symptoms related to an imbalanced blood sugar to give you an idea to go get tested is trouble with sleep, breathing, digestion, headaches, fatigue, weight gain, um, low libido or hormone imbalances, depression, um, digestion concerns, infertility, um, frequent going to the bathroom, trouble with concentration, and increased hunger. So what does the nervous system have to do with it? The nervous system controls everything in your body. It creates that fight or flight when you're under stress, um, where you just want to run away, or and sometimes you just want to sleep and, and be a zombie. Um, but it affects how our body deals with the environment and coordination of all of our cells in the body. So six ways that we can balance that blood sugar and uh, help support our overall body and our nervous system. So six ways to balance, um, for, we're gonna cover, we wanna have foods to avoid, nutrients to eat. Um, we're talking about fasting, exercise, breathing, and of course your spinal health. So some of the foods that we know can affect uh, your insulin um, is sugars. Anything that's made with a sugar, things like grains, packaged foods, breads, pasta, crackers, um, pop. These are areas that we really want to focus on reducing. And the best thing is just don't have it come in the house. Um, if it's not there, you can't eat it. Um, make it so that it's more difficult to get that you have to get out of the house um, and go purchase it um, and eat it away from the house. The one that's uh, you know more difficult is artificial sweeteners, the Splenda, the Sweet and Low, the fruit, high fructose corn syrup, because it's hidden in so many things. And so that's why you want to read the labels. And I encourage as one tip is just read those nutritional labels. One new thing each time you shop. Every week, you know that's 50 new things or 52 new things in the year where you've read the label and determined is this something that you want to be putting in your body or not. Um, look at the oils, um, canola oil, vegetable oil, soy oil, corn oil. These are all ones that we want to stay away from. Um, microwavable meals often can read the labels to determine what kind of preservatives are there, uh, what kind of fake oils it was um, made in, or, or artificial sugars that could be hidden in these products. So again, number one tip, Every time you go shopping, read one more set of labels so that you can be more informed. And again, if we just make one new better choice each week at the end of the year, we've made 52 changes to improve our overall health. This is number one priority in our lives. So some of the nutrients that you want to add, you want to add those good fats, the coconut oil, the avocado oil, avocados, olives, sardines, healthy nuts and healthy seeds. These are the things that's so much easier to add to the plate than take away. So making those things readily available, even in your eyesight, you know, we have avocados at home all the time available, the healthy fruits available. So on the counter, you want a variety of colors so that that's what attracts you and that's what you're going to first. Looking for your, lots of vegetables, your, especially your green. Remember, aiming for half your plate green, right? So every single meal looking towards green. Even if you're making that omelet, add that spinach in, add those green peppers in. Look for ways to add green into every single meal, whether it's broccoli or kale. Anything green is better than nothing. Look for those healthy chia seeds, almonds, walnuts, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds. If I, I do gluten-free oatmeal at times, I'll add that hemp seed and the seeds. My husband will add the flax seeds and pumpkin seeds, um, chia. These are all things that actually help you make you feel full, which is great, with the healthy oils. Go for the clean protein, so the wild fish, grass-fed meats, the free-range eggs and chicken. Yes, they're a little bit more expensive, but way better for you in the end. You want to put good gas in the tank, guys. So take a look, and again, each week, make just one more change. And then when we're looking at those fruits, look for berries. We always have blueberries, strawberries, uh, mostly raspberries in our house, but also blackberries. These are the low glycemic fruits versus going for you know things like mango, pineapple that are higher sugar and higher glycemic. And you want to make sure that you have those sugars, even the good ones, in moderation. Still a bit every single day, but keeping your overall sugar low down. 
So this comes from, again, Dr. Wolfson. You'll see his pyramid. Um, he's looking for foods they cause by God versus by man. But looking at all the different um, categories, um, but making sure that they're in moderation and you're still looking towards the grains being in a smaller amount. So you'll see this on the next couple of slides with his Dr. Wolfson uh, paleo pyramid. You'll see that the green area, that free range green area, the organic area, that's the most. So remember that's half your plate. And then you go towards your meats, uh, your fish or your proteins. That's the next part of your plate. Then we're looking towards your healthy oils, nuts and seeds, animal fats um, at, at the top being the least, the coconut, and then the fruit. So when we're looking at quantities, you're looking at the bottom of the pyramid being the most and the top of the pyramid being the least, but you're still having all the different uh, categories of foods. So with Dr. Wilson, he is loves the paleo nutrition, has tons of research that's going to come up here about how the paleo diet um, can affect your cardiovascular risk. And then same with the Mediterranean diet. If you look at it, the bottom is still the, you know, the lot of the vegetables and a lot of the physical activity at the bottom of the pyramid, then your, your healthy oils, meats, and at the very, very top, you'll see that um, the unhealthy meats and the, um, you know, a little bit of wine, lots and lots of water. But when we look at the Mediterranean diet, they have less risk of heart disease. And from Dr. Wilson, the more your essential oils, the more that it can lower your blood sugar. He talks about the benefit of getting your gut checked um, and the risks of gut health with diabetes. So again, checking that with your naturopath, they're typically one of the best to be able to um, help manage the right diet for your gut. So some of the good fats that we want to help for our overall diet, we want that olive oil, coconut oil, nuts, seeds, real butter, grass-fed foods, meats, eggs, um, whole milks, the wild Pacific, wild um, salmon, and the smaller fish or sardines, staying away from cottonseed oil, soybean oil, vegetable oil, and trust me, like looking for salad dressing, so hard. Uh, because these are hidden. So it's so much easier and cheaper to make your own. Um, and looking to stay away, of course, from margarine, just pure plastic, pure garbage. Don't even have it in your house. So some of the first changes is try to change at least one of your healthy proteins to grass-fed, free-range chicken, wild fish, natural sources of dairy. And to make it fun, you can uh, look at cinnamon. Um, we have cinnamon on the counter all the time, plus uh, like a pumpkin spice all the time. So that's where you can add it to your your oatmeal, to even when the kids make, um, what do they make? It's on French toast or pancakes or um, any type of coffee or tea. You can add cinnamon. That can help your overall blood sugars. You can add it for smoothies that can be delicious. Um, in order to add cinnamon to your diet to help your overall uh, blood sugars. Some of the other benefits of foods you can have is to help with walnuts um, because that and different nuts and seeds, they can overall help with heart disease. If we look at flax seeds, this is what we add to oatmeal, um, different meals. Um, they have lots and lots and lots of ways to help your digestion, help your overall health, help with weight loss, which will help with cholesterol and help with diabetes. Some of the foods that we want to avoid, I know nobody wants to hear this, but things that are packaged, and if it's in a package, if it's in a can, if it's in a box, typically these are things that you want to have less of. Things that are frozen prepared meals or processed or fast food, these are the ones that cause a challenge. So my challenge to you is if this is your regular meal, let's try just once a week. Just once a week that we have all of these packaged areas um, and then try and look towards more of the natural foods the other days of the week. Some of the other foods to avoid is things with soy. They definitely affect your um, phytoestrogens. So things that even uh, being a vegetarian, looking at tofu, being very, very careful with soy products, whether it's meatless burgers, um, tofu, um, tofurkey, all of those areas in moderation are none at all.
those artificial sugars, as I mentioned before, that even just within two weeks of using artificial sugars can affect uh, our glucose levels. Um, I know Diabetes Association often says to take Splenda, but again, less is best. The science is growing more and more and more with artificial sugars, how it leads to glucose intolerance. And after people typically have something this sweet, they want more sweet things. Um, and I'm talking to somebody who used to be addicted to Diet Coke. Typically, I, you know, in my 20s, I would have three to five a day uh, while I was studying uh, so much to stay awake. I wasn't a coffee drinker. So definitely realizing that there is a risk with these fake sugars. Some of the magnesium, these are areas that you want to, again, talk to your naturopath, talk to your medical doctor um, before taking a supplement and making sure you have the right supplement for you. But getting the magnesium naturally helps relax those smooth muscles. Um, so you get it from your, again, your greens, your avocados, your spinach, your Swiss chard, pumpkin seeds, almonds, figs, dark chocolate, bananas. So there is some fun ways that you can get that natural magnesium into your body. So magnesium, um, there's over 600 different reactions in your body that uses it. And one of the areas that it helps is smooth muscles around your arteries. So making sure you have the right um, amount of magnesium, the right supplements, um, definitely seek a professional to get the right one for you. All right, everybody, um, we have to talk about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has been known to help uh, with uh, helping your blood sugars and glucose intolerance. I do recommend having a coach along the way um, and then starting small and starting easy um, and maybe just a couple days of the week and then slowly increasing it. So one of the ways is to not eat breakfast first thing in the morning to eat, start the day later. Um, often I will start the day, you know, with the tea, with the coconut oil or coconut butter and then eat my breakfast at lunchtime. So you key is to, to find a reducing that window. Um, at the beginning, you might start with a 16-hour window, then go to a 12-hour window, then a 10-hour window to an 8-hour window. Those who are pretty intense might go to a 4-hour window. Um, and then, again, you might start it with just a few days a week and then slowly increase that over time. But definitely, this is one of the ways to help um, increase your fat burning time, help reduce weight, um, but do it with a coach. Do it to make sure so that you're not uh, getting to that short window of eating and then just binging on bad foods because you feel deprived. That will not work. We still need to make sure in that window of eating um, that we're going for those healthy foods and making sure that that's what's on the counter and that's what's readily available. Of course, with number four, we got to move. Um, our family, of course, loves that. We have our little gym in the basement and been working on improving that. But whether it's walking, just making sure that you change the pace. It's not just a steady walk, fast, low, fast, low, fast, low. Same with your runs. Change your pace, change your routes, um, and then add that high intensity interval training. So if you're new to that, it might be 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Maybe it's just punching, maybe it's jumping jacks, um, maybe it's just you know, going up, down in your chair for 30 seconds as fast as you can and then relax for 30 seconds, go again 30 seconds, relax 30 seconds. This can be done with sit and fit. You do not have to be um, in top shape to be able to add uh, intensity, high intensity interval training. You just have to do it high for yourself. And what that high means is that you're out of breath, but it doesn't mean you have to be jumping. Um, it can be sort of modified. And that's why our kinesiologists are there. Personal trainers can be there to help modify and get you the right routine that you want. Cool right now, so much on YouTube that's free that you can join in and try and find your level for that high intensity intervals. We need to sweat and we got to get rid of those excuses. You have the time. You are not doing as many other things right now. So you have the time. Make the time. Do it first thing in the morning so that you have no excuse. Um, you don't have, you can shower right afterwards. Uh, and, and it can be done in just, you know, six to 10 minutes, six to 12 minutes. So you do have the time. If you can't go to the gym, none of us can. You can do it literally in your living room, your bedroom. Um, you know, just like I would if, say, I was at a hotel, you could literally do it in the hotel room. You have the energy because the more you start doing it, the more energy you will get from it, the better quality sleep you will have. Um, and if you're, 
you're finding this boards, talk to a friend, do it with them on Zoom, do it with some of the YouTube clips. I've been doing it with our kids in our basement. Finding a way to connect with somebody to do it together certainly pushes me. Um, definitely to exercise with my kids, it uh, pushes me, or to exercise with my husband makes it a ton more fun. We just have to evaluate ourselves. Give us our check. Like, where are we spending our time and our money? Is our time going on all that healthy foods, um, healthy exercise equipment? I know uh, our family, of course, isn't traveling or isn't going to restaurants or movies or even the hockey or the sports that we're used to spending money on. So we spend more money improving our gym. And it's just a little thing in the basement. But um we're making it better and better. So we're more excited about using that equipment. So think about, you know, now's the time to be learning more about organic foods and the dirty dozen. And now's the time to be just making that one more change each week so that you are at the end of this, uh, you know, challenging, challenging time for all of us. You are healthier than you ever were before. When we see these diabetes risks go up, we know that daily exercise is so, so important reducing our risk. And if you're new to it, aiming for a minimum of 30 minutes each day. Dr. Wolfson, he talks about the importance of vitamin D. We know that that's great for our overall health. It is also great for, vitamin, uh, for diabetes. And we look at diabetes, the vitamin D, there's so much research, so much research getting your vitamin D3, but get your levels checked. Find out what you need and how much more you need if you uh, with a supplement, um, at least annually with your MD or with your naturopath, have your vitamin D levels checked. Some of the blue light exposure, this is challenging right now, including myself on the computer a lot more, on the phone a lot more. This blue light exposure is a risk. So taking uh, well, blue light glasses, um, taking the time to make sure you're um, recognizing that blue light is a challenge and how can you reduce those risks. Getting good quality sleep, again, Dr. Wilson's information here, affects our overall risk of diabetes. We know that those who are not getting good quality sleep, not getting asleep, who need sleeping pills are at more risks. Um, so especially you'll see the risks at the bottom there with men. Um, if we sleep less than six hours, that increases our risk overall with diabetes. Stress is a huge one, and this is where chiropractic fills in. Chiropractic helps reduce stress on the overall body and overall mindset, and we know that stress increases infl inflammation and glucose um, intolerance, affects our overall energy and health, and also just affects our choices. I know when I'm super stressed out, um, I make bad choices. Uh, I typically will go for those comfort foods. Um, so we need to make sure that I have a routine in place for your exercise routine, for your food, um, your, your diet. You want to have that routine so that that's the first go-to. Dr. Wilson also talks about toxic metals, um, and that can be tested with a holistic nutritionist, with the live blood cell analysis, with your naturopath. Typically, your MD doesn't do a lot of uh, metal testing, but we know that if you have high metals, um, uh, toxic metals, that will increase your risk of diabetes significantly. So looking at these risks of diabetes um, with plastics. So just being careful with your BPA. Again, um, trying to minimize any um, bisphenol A and your risks with that affecting your heart. Antibiotics, as this slide comes again from Dr. Wilson, increase your risk of diabetes. Um, you'll see the research um, from the uh, journal at the bottom in the research there. So definitely making sure to talk to your medical doctor and your naturopath about other alternatives when needed. Some of the testing from Dr. Wilson's, uh, you will see the list here. You can again go over these tests with your medical doctor, take a picture, um, go over them with your naturopath. If you are somebody who is gaining weight, is overweight, already has risk signs, these are something that you would certainly want to do annually. 
Leaky gut syndrome is something the naturopaths uh, really focus with, Dr. Udani, looking at that um, hyper uh, permeability in the gut and how that affects your risk with diabetes. So talking to them about a gut health diet, super important. And Dr. Udani does offer consultations, opportunity just to meet and greet, make sure that that's for you, that you are at risk and what kind of changes you could start to make. Um, you can do that virtually with her or uh, in the office, you can set up a free uh, meet and greet before setting up a, a full examination. Some of the diabetes drugs that Dr. Wolfson uh, mentions here that the uh, medical doctors can prescribe, just wanna make sure that you're doing all of the lifestyle changes first and as well. We don't want to be dependent um, thinking that this is the main fix. Our goal is to make sure we uh, take control of things that we can control just a little bit at a time. Metformin, um, if, if that is something uh, for you and is prescribed for you, of course, follow those recommendations. But double check that you don't have any risk of B12 folate uh, deficiency. Uh, make sure that you don't need any CoQ10, ubiquitin. Um, double check that you're getting your levels uh, checked fully. And are you not just at low level, but you want to be at high levels in order to help create the best production. Vitamin A, um, and there's going to be a list of few things here that you want to make sure you're checking with your naturopath because these are things that can help with um, diabetes. So vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D, vitamin B, vitamin K are all areas that can help with lowering blood sugar. Your essential oils, your omega-3 can help reduce um, your risk with your blood sugars. Um, you'll see some of the uh, zinc can play a big role, melatonin, because if you can improve your sleep, that will affect your blood sugars. Again, make sure you have these checked before rushing out for any supplements. Now, one of the biggest things is breathing. So everybody together, um, this is stressful times. This can make our heart palpate, make you feel that we have more anxiety, more stress. So just taking a big breath in, we're going to count for 10 and 10 in, 10 out. So breathing in. And breathing out. So simple, so simple. Um, just getting those shoulders up and then getting those shoulders down um, to just get a breathing five big breaths, 10 in, 10 out. We have numerous talks on our website about other breathing exercises and coming up is our yoga talk with breathing exercises. So stay tuned because this does reduce the stress in the body. So now how this affects your nervous system, chiropractors, what we focus is on the spine and the nervous system. And we know that if there's proper alignment, proper movement of the spine and the nerves, that affects how those nerves go to the muscles, organs, and tissues in the body. We know that there's an amazing intelligence in our spine and nervous system, controls all function, all healing, all energy. It's considered the super highway of that brain-body connection. And our goal is to reduce that stress. Literally, if there's pressure on, to remove that pressure on the spinal cord so our body can adapt and function to the stresses that we put in our body, whether it's chemical, physical, or emotional. So what we look for are subluxations. These are misalignments, areas that are twisted or turned or grabbing on the spinal cord and causing interference of the nervous system. And what a chiropractor does is does x-rays, nerve scans, motion palpation, palpation, range of motion, task history. We do all of these tests to look for these areas of subluxation. And then our goal is, of course, to take that pressure off the spinal cord. And that can be done with either an instrument or a, by hand or with the table, depending on um, any risk factors to find the right technique for you. And that can be discussed with your chiropractor, with your doctor. We look for what people call those pinched nerves where the nerve is not functioning well. That means that it's subluxated. There's pressure on that nerve. And then our goal is, of course, move that pressure so that message from your brain can get through that nerve to all the different parts that it needs to go to as well as possible. So you'll see here, getting that C curve in your neck is super, super important. You can see where it squishes and um, causes a funnel in that spinal cord. And this is typically happening with 
phones and laptops, a lot of looking down these days because we're on our devices. Very, very important for kids now that are on school online, setting up a, an environment that's safe for their neck and their spines. A lot of computers are set up for parents and not for their kids. So definitely, um, you know, send a picture to us. I'd be happy to circle the areas where there's a challenge and give you an email back um, for the healthy environment for your kids uh, in their learning, but also check your ergonomics for your workstation. And we do have numerous wellness talks on this already because the damage of that neck curve affects your brain stem and causes huge stress to all parts of your body above and below. So if your spine's out of alignment, that does put you in this stress response, this fight or flight response, and make sure that we can manage our hormones, manage our energy, manage the nerve flow to the different parts of our body. It makes us feel like we're we're running away from the bear. We're, we're always constantly running and stressing and revving like a car revving versus being able to be in that relaxed state where we can focus, concentrate, heal um, in a better state. So some, there's so much research about the vagus nerve, the nerve right at the top of the wandering nerve and how that affects all the different parts of your body and how it helps your body to relax. So some of the symptoms, if you have poor blood sugars, again, these are risk factors and these are also areas where you can see the chiropractor and they can help with removing those areas of subluxation, improving that brain body connection, and then work along with your naturopath and your uh, medical doctor in order to get the best response. Tons of upcoming webinars. Stay tuned, guys. This affects all of our families, all of our loved ones, um, especially with the challenges of weight gain today and in activity. Um, so important to get outside to reduce our risks and stay tuned for the 12 foods you want to add to your diet, uh, the breathing exercises to reduce your stress, ways to manage that arthritis and get taking care of your lower limbs, your hips, your knees, your feet. So stay tuned with us weekly. Share this, share this, share this with others. Um, and we always appreciate a review to help others. So have a wonderful week and stay tuned. We look forward to seeing you soon.